Sometimes the best way to crack into a new pistol is just get out on the range and start shooting. First few rounds of the all new Canik Mette MC9L. At first glance, you probably thought that this all new pistol was just the regular MC9, which we reviewed over a year ago now at this point. But no, this is the MC9L. What is the MC9L? Well, to make it short, the MC9L is an MC9 with a 17 round capacity and more importantly, a full size grip. Now, with the previous one, you had 12 round and 15 round capacity. Now with this pistol, it's a little bit longer, same overall grip design and feel with good grip textures and a good trigger. Uh, the, the trigger itself, again, is gonna be one of the best striker fire pistols on the market, and especially for this size of pistol. Now, it's just a really, really good overall trigger and how it feels and how it breaks. And we'll show that stuff under live fire because it, it is good. It's really, really darn good. None, none of that like mushy take up that you get with your Glock ones or your SIG triggers or you know the shadow systems. It's much better than those. It really is. You do have AMB controls on here for AMB slide stop slide release, a magazine release that you can actually swap if you really wanted to. However, this one here is fine for me because I'm right handed. Now the iron sights on here you don't have night sights unfortunately it's a white dot front and black dot rear which is okay because in the future we would end up just mounting a red dot on here which this one will fit all of your popular smaller red dots so no issues with that and then let's say probably one of the bigger downfalls i would find on this pistol that i would really like to see canic improve on the mc9 series in general is the slide serrations they're very minimal uh, i just i would like a little bit more especially maybe something across the top because it helps if you're doing press checks and it helps with manipulations for folks even if you don't have stronger hands you can get a better grip overall on that pistol grip textures though they're like sandpaper and they feel good uh, i would like to probably see a little bit more grip texture up top here but overall i think it's very usable and then the pick rail up there you can mount your popular micro series lights getting into the magwell it's actually beveled and flared, which is nice. And it's one of the better bevel, bevel and flare jobs I've seen on most of your pistols in this size range. Now the overall like height and width and all that stuff for this pistol is very similar like we see on CR920X or your SIG macro. Not the X macro because we're not really looking at like one with a comp on it. This obviously isn't comped. But more importantly, Canik is also going to have a longer slide variant of this as well. So you're gonna have a slightly longer slide, but what's really cool with this, we'll show and demonstrate it, is that this 17 round magazine, you can actually use your 18 rounders, your 21 rounders, your 20 round mags from all of your other Canik pistols that you own on those size ranges, and they'll actually fit in this pistol. So you can take a micro pistol and use the same magazine compatibility as all of your full size pistols. So if you're a Canik owner and you have a bunch of other Canik pistols, you have no issues putting more mags in this gun. And then on basically, you get two out of the box with it, good mags, you know, overall with that stuff. But right out of the gate, you can get this pistol if you already own a Canik and probably have a pile of magazines. Plate's a little stubborn today. Really a good feel pistol. Um, I don't, it's just like that snap that sometimes you really get out of these smaller pistols like that isn't bad. And I think I recorded that really well when we shot the initial MC9 from Canik and it just, it shoots really, really well. So let's slow down for a minute. Let me load up some more mags and I'll show you guys how that trigger performs. Before we load up to show that trigger, I think it's important to really show you guys some of the, the things that you get for the overall value with really all of your Canik pistols for that matter. Uh, the pistol itself, you know, MSRP, you're looking about 500 bucks. I, I can guarantee you'll find it cheaper than that. Canics are pretty much always cheaper than whatever MSRP is. Give them some time, you know, once that initial buzz passes. But really, with this pistol, you also get your hard case, which is pretty standard for Canic. You get a bore brush, you get a little tool or a punch, you get back straps, a little wrench. You then get also a plug there so you can use some wipes if you need to, your manuals and all that stuff. Speed loader, which usually these speed loaders, they kind of suck. We have these... Uh, blue Les won't use it. Um, now let's talk about like the holster. The holster, I can't sit here and tell you that it's great. What I'll tell you is that it's usable. Uh, it's It does have retention and all that stuff. And I was just wearing it there for our initial shots and it works okay. I, I think it's something that could get you by 
And I think it's still like a safe overall holster to use if you wanted to use it for CCW or EDC um, before you go and you order a custom holster because you want a light or whatever it might be. But what we were talking about before with the magazines, like I said, these are 17 round mags, easy to load. I mean, you could actually fit 17 in here with your standard thumbs. You don't even need an up to load these, unlike a macro magazine, which are just absolutely miserable and you're lucky to ever get 17 in them. But what we were saying, is that this is a magazine for our TTI Combat. So the TTI Combat magazine fits fine, no issues. Obviously you see it's a little bit longer because this is an 18 round mag, but you see it fits fine in there, locks fine, no differently than like that one. So it's really great to see. And again, like I mentioned, that mag well is a little bit beveled. And so like with your factory mags, you also have some textures there in the bottom of the magazine and you're able to pull that thing out if you really needed to. So really, really well done, really well thought out, you know, some of your textures and things like that. So really hard to really beat what you get as far as an overall value and pistols that we've had good luck with. I know on the initial MC9, some folks did complain about having some possible issues with it. Now we, we never have. Ours has well over a thousand rounds through it and it's been nothing but reliable. It's been a really good pistol that is not ammo picky whatsoever. So I can't speak to issues somebody else has. I can only speak from a one of one sample or one of one gun that we have. So, you know, for ourselves though, everything that Canik has, has put out that we have bought, that we've shot, everything has been great. And I can't recommend their stuff enough for somebody looking for a good pistol with a good overall quality that also doesn't break the bank where you get some of those nicer features that you may only find on some of your most expensive striker fire guns. So let's get out here and show this trigger now. Before I begin to shoot now and demonstrate the trigger for you, if you're new to the channel, what I would recommend that you do is, of course, like the video, share it with your friends and help that out. But in addition to that, if you see me wearing anything today, you see the gun, you see the holsters and things like that, our website does have a link in the description so you can go to that link in the description take you to our full loadout for the video and help you find some of the stuff you may be looking for but then more importantly too is when we do these reviews a lot of times they're more like an initial thoughts or impressions and usually we do a couple hundred rounds and if you're ever interested in how the gun's performing in the future i do make positive updates usually within Instagram and X. So if you're ever interested, you can check out our webpage, you can check out social media on other things and see some of that stuff on a quicker form update on how something may be performing. Now, with the trigger on the MC9L, if you're unfamiliar with the MC9, it was very good. So we'll get right into that stuff. I'll walk you through this thing on live fire. So with the trigger, coming down onto the trigger, you see I got that nice, soft, very smooth take up. I'm at a wall, and per every Canic trigger, or Walther trigger for that matter, there is no creep at the wall. It's just smooth. So we'll go into it again. So take up, wall, and a break. It's just very, very clean. Um, I'd say the overall breaking weight is probably about four pounds. And a very, very, very short reset. Just beautiful. I mean, that reset, it might be quarter of an inch if that so if you're somebody that does use the reset a lot it's gonna be good for you and in general too what you'll find is that take up is very easy to manage really just very nice trigger this thing is it's probably one of the best ones you're gonna find especially for a striker fired let's say compact gun so then now obviously these are like a slimmer compact gun versus what you're used to and it just, it is really good. I, uh, for all the ones that I've shot, this is probably the best one on the market in this size category. Just a very easy pistol to shoot. Um, you know, I, I think that really for, for most folks, like when I shoot my CR 920 X, I do get slide by and this pistol is just not going to happen. It does have a higher bore axis and it's much thicker there, but I can't say that this pistol feels like super snappy. It just, it feels good. It's a really nice shooting gun. You know, again, probably, you know, if I was to make a negative comment about the gun, I can't say anything about function. It's been good. We're over 100 rounds through it, 100% flawless out of the box, 124 grain cellular and But, you know, like I would like to see them improve 
the slide serrations on their pistols. Uh, just these ones in particular. Of course, they have better ones on some of their other guns, but like the slide serrations on here, they're just weak. Uh, this is what you're seeing from the standard SIG stuff, which is just crappy in my opinion. The slide stop slide release is good. I like this texture up here. It's almost like a reference point for some folks. They're gonna like that. Takedown's fine, easy to do, but you'll notice up here, a lot of folks kind of don't, you know, really recognize this, but when you're getting your full grip, okay, so when you're getting a two-handed grip and you're filling up this gap to maintain proper recoil control and you get your hand up here, basically this top part of the heel on your palm there has nothing to grip onto. So uh, you'll see I get a full grip and you see my hand goes all the way up there and essentially most of the gripping surface on the heel of my palm is not catching on anything, so it's smoother. So what you notice then is I can actually feel that pistol slight start to slide a little bit in there but really the rest of the textures are good my hand fits good on there i would just really like to see that grip texture continue all the way up here at the top and you know a lot of manufacturers do this sig's guilty of it and i've seen even smith and wesson do it in the past but for whatever reason some manufacturers just don't do that and i don't i don't have an answer for that i'm not the engineer at the company but i would just really like to see an improvement on there so if canic's listening that's definitely something I would recommend. And again, it's because when your hand is up high and you're filling that gap on your gun, that's part of the gripping surface for the gun. And it's also going to reduce how recoil feels in your hand. So let's fire a few more rounds of this gun. I'll give you some final thoughts on it. But if I was to tell you right now, if this thing's worth it, hard to say it's not. Talking about recoil with the new Canik Meta MC9L, uh, especially in comparison to the previous model, the regular MC9 with the shorter grip and all that, this is a night and day difference between how the two of them shoot. You don't get any of that, like that muzzle flip where it feels like it's coming out of your hand. And especially like when you're shooting it fast, you really don't notice it. I mean, the pistol is just so easy to shoot, especially for its size. Overall, really, really good shooting. It's hard for me to not sit here and tell you right now that the overall configuration of the all new Canik MC9L is really, really good. It's really well done. It shoots great. And in fact, it's just another fantastic option on the market. And no doubt about it, for a non-comped gun in this size category, this is probably one of the nicest shooting guns that we have shot. Um, in fact, I actually find this gun more comfortable to shoot than my Shadow System CR920X, and that's saying something. Now, granted, I carry the XP, but this thing here, if I had to shoot between this or the X right out of the gate, I just think that this feels better in my hand to shoot. I don't get any slide bite, the trigger is nicer, yeah, it lacks some of those other aspects, but just how it shoots and feels in my hand is just very, very shootable. And I think that this is definitely a great pickup for somebody looking for a larger capacity gun with a larger grip for your larger size hands. But if you guys disagree with me, you think I'm an idiot, you hate Canon, whatever it might be, drop us a comment and let us know your thoughts. Like the video and share it with all of your friends, but stay tuned for Hunt Fish Shoot.